Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Sugar Mama's Fire Plague Podcast. I am financial planner, Canna Campbell, and I am incredibly excited today because today's podcast is a debt-free, mortgage-free, you can almost call it, podcast. You see, we're going to be chatting with Laura from the most incredible the brains behind this incredible Instagram account, The Savvy Man. And Laura, listen to this, managed to pay $316,000 off her home loan in four years and in four months. It is incredible what she did, and she's going to share exactly why and how she did it. So let's get started. Laura, thank you so much for coming on today's podcast. I really appreciate the time you're taking. And I also want to say thank you for creating such high value content on Instagram. That is actually how I found you. And when I saw your post about what you had achieved financially, and I went back and looked at all your other incredibly informative, easy to understand, inspiring and incredibly motivating posts, I had to have you on and I had to hear your story and how you did this. Um, So thank you. How are you? I'm really good thanks um I'm finding it really surreal that I'm speaking to you because you were pretty much one of the first books on personal finance that I came across and it just blows my mind I actually had to google I was like when did Canna write this book like when did it come out and I looked at and I was like February 2018 so like five years for you that's awesome um I, <laughs> it's I, still I a bit silly today i know and like i know from other mums that i chat to it's the hardest book to get in the local library like it's always out on loan so <laughs> which i think is, is is really interesting i suppose like we took out our mortgage in 2018 and i read that book i'm pretty sure around december 2018 so we're still pretty fresh you know in the news so i think that's how i probably stumbled across it but from prepping for this chat with you, like your your big question was, why did we start this journey? Can I just stop you for a second, just to clarify for all the listeners right now, the book that Laura was referring to that kickstarted her, I guess, mortgage-free journey was The Thousand Dollar Project. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. And can you just quickly give me a bit, of a bit of a background as to, you know, like your family, where you're from and what you do for work, just so people can go, oh, well, clearly this woman must be earning a fortune and have no children <laughs> and have a very unrealistic living expenses. You know, tell me, tell yeah. me who you are because a lot of people will relate yes, to you. Yes, because I get that. I've read so many of these kind of, you know, like, clickbait stories and then you're like oh, that, that's not me like that's not achievable so our story is we moved to Australia from Ireland in 2012 and like anyone that has been on a work college visa they know how hard it is no matter how good you are at your job the employer can't keep you so you can work somewhere for six months then you've got to just move on and it's really disheartening for your for your CV because you're literally like I have moved so many times but for me it was a positive because when we got our permanent residency uh, in 2015 you got unlimited work rights and that's when I started thinking like I have worked in sales I have worked in recruitment I've worked in admin events and not for profit I've worked on social media I've, I've done everything and I was like I came from a family business back in Ireland so that kind of desire to have something of my own has mm. always been there but when you come to a new country it's very hard to get into that space. So like everyone, I'm on Pinterest, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Google. I'm like, how can I start a business in Australia with, with no money? You know, because there was no point saying we had no, you know, we had money to travel back to Ireland. You know, we had money to go out. I was 26. I was like, I just, I just don't know what to do. So anyway, came across the world of virtual assistants. You probably can, as a business owner, you probably know what a virtual assistant is because they're like a jack of all trades that can help you with a website, a podcast, social media, everything. But you don't have the thing of having to hire a full-time employee, which is really hard for small businesses to maybe mm. afford. Because I worked in sales, I was like, I I can sell this. I I can sell this to people. So I had to sell it the idea to my future husband. So in 2016, <laughs> we also had got engaged, and that brought up a conversation of: Are we moving back to Ireland? Will we build a house in Ireland? Will we stay in Australia? All added up, kind of things of Australia seemed really hard if we had a family. So I know loads of people don't have family support, but because we're from like really 
family orientated families back home it was important to us that's how I sold virtual assistant business to Kevin I was like if I can make this work I can work around future kids you know save on daycare all these things so the start of the finance journey was let's live off one salary and like no people are like no no and that one salary idea to me I was like actually do it but we had to do it because I was starting a business that I didn't know if it could earn money so I was kind of like I'm stepping out of employment to do something I don't know if it's gonna earn money sink or swim and you had no other option but to swim as hard as you possibly can doggy paddle freestyle backstroke whatever kept you afloat (laughs) absolutely and I am very aware that I'm in a privileged position because I had a partner who was happy for me to do that I know from Instagram there are married couples who would not combine their finances if they paid them. You know, there's people that aren't in a relationship that, you know, they're doing it on their own. So I don't want this to be kind of like, you know, oh, I, I can't live off one wage. I'm just trying to tell you that's how we started. Yeah. So the one wage thing was the start of it. Now, can you tell me, like, you have paid off 316000 mm. actually just over and four years and four months. Do you have children? I do. I have a two-year-old son. And you work for yourself and your husband yeah. works full time. What made you decide, I want to have a go at paying off as much of our mortgage as possible? Like, where did this goal come from and where was it inspired to to basically have a crack at tackling your mortgage and the stress that comes from that? I consume motivational content constantly as a business owner. So my business got to a stage. So, like, I'll be honest, I left a $60,000 salary to start my business like it's a good income but it's not fabulous not like I was earning six figures and at the time five years ago when my husband was well he is an electrician but he had just started in a new job so what happened was I was consuming all this content but my business then it made money and what happened was that money but I was still afraid so I would kind of save that money and I was squirreling it away we still lived on one income and it was a case of my business went to six figures and I was like I didn't think I could do this <laughs> but instead of a lifestyle creep of kind of like oh we don't need to live on, on one wage I was like what what could we do with this so something that really hits my mind when I think of my mortgage broker meeting and I think this will hit home with a lot of people so did my paperwork and they were like your monthly payment is 1950 and I went oh no I pay weekly and they were like what? and I was like oh I pay my rent weekly so I would like to pay my mortgage weekly and I think the broker was like oh god <laughs> but, you know why is this girl being awkward because that's what it was I wasn't ticking the standard box of paying monthly so they had to recalculate and then it was like you're on 480 a week and I was like oh no we pay 550 rent and the person just pay the 480 so Kevin was looking at me going Laura just stop so anyway 480 happened and it was only when we built the house so it was nine months later we got into the house so we weren't paying a mortgage until you know nine months so it was kind of a set and forget everyone tells you when you take out a home loan everyone sets you up at what the weekly repayment is no one tells you it could change and it can which we all know with the rising cost multiple rate rises that just keep coming multiple, multiple what happened was I got the first statement and I have had conversations with friends who have never looked at the mortgage statement and this blows my mind Mm. because I could see 1900 and whatever you know a month going out you know my my 480 a week and I then looked at the interest and I was like I've only paid 200 dollars off my principal like that that made me feel ill Mm. because I knew we could do more so first thing I did was like we're moving it to 550 so that was that was 70 dollars a week extra and then it just got a little bit addictive, if I'm honest. I started going onto calculators. You and gamified I can see it. your mortgage. Yeah. I love it. I, I literally did. And, you know, and, and if you ask my husband right now, he he only got into it, I think, in the last two years when, we, when he saw how much it changed. Because the one thing I would say to listeners is, $70, it doesn't seem like it can do anything. I did an Instagram post for people where it showed on like a $500,000 mortgage, how much 50 a week, how much 100 a week. And people were like, they didn't know they could overpay. They didn't know that I could. Because if you're not a maths person, which I'm not necessarily, but I'm a visual person. Hmm. And I was like, 
Oh my God. Like it was a no brainer. That's why I have these calculators on the sugar mama website is to show people the impact of an extra $20 per week on their mortgage. And I published a podcast only the other day with my results from frugal February, because I found an extra, I think 80 to $100 per month in savings um, nice. from doing frugal February. It was really simple stuff like chain called up origin energy and switched our gas plan and our energy plan and then foxtel i got one of the cert we had a i think multi-room thing that we didn't need we weren't using it so that saved another 20 dollars. worked out to be between 80 to 100 dollars per month and i am about to increase our automatic mortgage payments by an extra 100 dollars per month now Amazing. if we call it at 80 you know it's 20 dollars per week people you know could very easily go how embarrassing 20 dollars that's who cares but if you took an average mortgage of around about $600,000 over a 30-year term, and we assume that we're one year into that mortgage with a 5% interest rate, which a lot of people are paying more, that works out to be $32,000 in savings and 18 months off the home loan. So no one ever should turn their nose up at savings if you have a mortgage because the value of that $20 per week is incredible. It is The sooner you get to make those extra payments – the better. And I completely agree with you on the gamifying. And this thousand dollar project is gamified. Mm. For me, it's a gamified about investing. Um, but I know that myself, when I was a single mother, um, and even today, I look at that interest repayment on a home loan and want to vomit. And mm. people will skip coffees and live a very frugal life. But quite often, the smartest way to save serious money is to pay off your mortgage as goddamn quickly as possible. Now, so it sounds like if I ask you where your inspiration came from, it probably came from fear in a good way in that it drove mm -hmm. you to make sure that you could continue on being self-employed and running your own business. Yeah. Make hay while the sun shines. Like I was like, if I'm making six figures this year, like it sounds really bad, but I was like, I didn't need it for my life. Like, like we had, we had simplified things. We are in a new house now, but the first house we didn't over mortgage, we were the goal was to kind of just build this as an equity and not and not rent. I could see the potential of how that six figures could make an impact. But don't get me wrong, like God, we slipped up. I have bought handbags. I have, you know, I've done things. You know, <laughs> you're safe. Like, there's no judgment here. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I um, think you might have, like made me feel okay about it. Like, which, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna thank you or not for that. <laughs> <laughs> Your husband may not. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, so you, you the fear of, you know, not wanting to sink, um, you know, probably yeah. drove you. And that's the thing is people can have tra trauma and fallbacks and failures, but and they don't need to hold you back in life and keep you stuck. You can actually channel yeah. them and reframe them and redirect them yeah. to help you move forward. And that's what it sounds like you did, that fear of wanting to stay self-employed, wanting to keep running your business, uh, wanting to take control of that stress in your life is what drove you to, to be, you know, to then work on the mortgage. And then that gamification came from seeing how the impact and the progress of trying to reduce your mortgage and how actually quick and easy it really was would you agree with that absolutely I think and I think it's it's such a personal choice like that's the one thing I want to like because I was a little bit afraid of telling this story because you know yourself you see a lot of people that they're either pro paying down the mortgage or you're a fool for paying it off like you know you've lost out on all this chance to invest and stuff but it has to come from a personal place and what it meant to you and because we set such a it's not like I said oh I'll pay my mortgage off in 25 years I was like I want to be in a different place by the time I'm 40 so you know I was just trying to use the best of what we can mm -hmm. and take advantage of it because at the end of the day it's it's you against you if you get me like it's not about comparison it's not what other people are doing that really matters like you need to sit down and my husband said to me last night he was like it's a conversation and a spreadsheet in your matter. Like, but it was what, what us as a couple, it, you know, it start conversations that, you know, not everyone's actually having because money and they is should be. If you have a mortgage, well, these are the conversations. You need to send this podcast to your partner. You need to send this to your accountant. You need, you need to be having debt-free, mortgage-free goals in your life if you want a better life with less financial stress, more financial freedom, yeah. more holidays, more handbags. Yeah. That there is your answer is get the mortgage down as quickly as possible. Now, where do you research ideas to, you know, did you use uh, lump sum repayment calculators? Did you use extra repayment calculators? Uh, where did you get ideas to come up with extra money? Like where did you research your 
debt-free, mortgage-free life? Where did it come from? I think the first thing was because I used Pinterest so much for the virtual assistant business because I was constantly, you know, researching how other people made that successful because it was massive in the US, but not in Australia. People still didn't get the concept. I used the same research skills then on the mortgage. I went onto Pinterest, which would then direct me to YouTube, Instagram, Google. I was consuming everything. I was picking books up out of the library. I was buying books. But it was your book, The Thousand Dollar Project, that just simplified it. Like, that's the thing. Like, money doesn't have to be hard. And what I loved with The Thousand Dollar Project was one, you were talking to people about side, about earning outside of their salary. People don't even comprehend to do it. They they just, I think, you know, we're, we're in a society that we, we all just sat on the sofa in the evening, but like there's hours every week that you could do something. So I think I was really intrigued by, you know, I remember you put up the post about Gumtree. That probably started me on my random marketplace selling journey. I nearly made $9,000 last year on it. It just stemmed from there. I, I did try market research. I have tried cash rewards. All those things became apparent to me at, without you writing that book. I don't know if it would have come to me that same way. The one thing that your book has like ingrained in my head, and it's a little bit, a little bit like out of frugal February, but like everything you, every time you get a win or a saving, I transfer it into the mortgage. So I don't have a thousand dollar project. It just goes. So oh, that's fine. If, yeah. A thousand dollar project could be for any financial goal in your life. I've had people even yeah. do a thousand dollar project for reconstructive surgery. Yeah. Like, at IVF and paying yes. off their home loan and saving up their first yeah. deposit as, as well as obviously investing. Like it's literally up to you. I think also with that side hustle concept, a lot of people overcomplicate it mm. and they think, oh no, I'm too tired. I, you know, I can't do that or I I have a set routine like they they overthink it and just then don't yeah. bother but I was yeah. saying to someone the other day I was like well you are alone every Friday night and yeah. I, I'm not going to suggest someone goes and takes a you know a 10-hour shift standing in a bar serving drinks I'm like if you wanted to you could just go and babysit for three hours and not much energy involved and it's cash hopefully the ato yeah. is not listening to this yeah <laughs> um, um if you're a babysitter and you're earning cash technically you should be declaring it to the ato <laughs> but um not sure if anyone actually does do that yeah. but you know there's there's cash in your hand it's payment on the spot and it doesn't have to be something that's very taxing to the body uh, yeah. and that might be an extra 50 dollars per week it might be extra 100 dollars per week but they're, they're, that's something very simple that a lot of people you know obviously with the right credentials can, can uh, and experience yeah. can do now what did you do talk me through because clearly you, it's so ingrained and embedded in your automatic habit system talk me through every hack and trick you did to save two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars off your home loan to automate it i would say set your weekly repayment like bump it up to where you're comfortable so for us that was 550 the first beauty was covid like COVID, like the interest rates slashed. We were on variable. So our payment at one point was only meant to be like 290. So we were we were paying 260 bucks extra on top of then what we were doing additional. So the biggest thing was, even if you manage to refinance your mortgage and get a lower interest rate, don't don't lower the amount. Like just don't do it and don't change the term. Like exactly. Oh my gosh. I'm yeah. so glad you're saying this. I have a podcast called the, the traps of um the, the hidden traps of refinancing. And I talk about oh. this. So I'm like, all you are doing is delaying paying off your home loan. You actually end up paying more interest in the long run anyway. So yeah. jump on that opportunity of having a lower interest rate if you do refinance. Yeah. Keep your term loan the same. So if you are five years into your home loan, don't go and take out a fresh 30-year loan. Take out a 25-year loan so you're still on track. And if your mortgage repayment is currently $2,000 per month, but your new mortgage repayment is going to be, say, $1,700 per month, keep it at that $2,000. Yeah. And as, as Laura said, try and pay your mortgage repayments weekly because you'll be making an extra repayment per calendar year and there i mean there's so many other little things but when you do all of these little things holy crap they really do add up and you start to see your mortgage reduce very very quickly and the cool thing is each month you log in and do this that interest repayment assuming the interest rate stays the same that interest savings gets smaller and that lump sum repayment or uh, principal reduction gets bigger and it's yeah. it's sexy. <laughs> it's yeah. so empowering going, oh my God, yeah. we're beating the bank. We're actually getting ahead. Yeah. 
So yeah. what other things did you do? Like every time ad hoc, oh, yeah. or did you do ad hoc transfer? So if you did market uh, research and earned $100, would you transfer that immediately onto the home loan? Yeah, absolutely. Like it even got as simple as if I got a, like an online voucher to get like 40 the other day, actually, in witchery. I had $90 credit for like, you know, witchery for my birthday and rewards and that. And I spent them on a pair of pants for like, you know, $140. But that $90, then I moved into the mortgage because I would have spent the hundred and like 40 on the pants. So I didn't think the pants were 50 bucks. Like that just, you know, it's, mm. it's, a, it's a mindset shift. And it it is exhausting when you start it, but it becomes normality and I think that it becomes was, fun. I think it it, it, it goes, yeah. becomes really fun and really empowering and it becomes obsessive even. Yes, exactly. And the biggest thing, like, obviously, so people are probably listening and going like, that still can't add up to 316,000. So what happened was all of my money, like my wage would sit in our offset. So, you know, that would save, you know, so like as much as we lived on one wage, we always had a buffer, like, you know, just in case, you know, because we need but every couple of months we would we would go in and we would go, we don't need this money for the next, say, three months or six months. And I would transfer 20 grand. Like I was like, it it if it was in our account, we would find a way of spending it. It, it you know, we would have let lifestyle creep in. So the focus was my wage was just my money was going to go on the mortgage. And I would say probably 80% of it did, you know. So I'm not saying like we live pinned collar on Kevin's salary because obviously things did change. But yeah. even something as simple as during COVID, we had um, a $20,000 trip for America and Ireland and it got cancelled. And obviously that 20 grand went back into our account. I then fell pregnant and I was like, we ain't doing this trip anytime soon. So, <laughs> God, no, no this no. is crazy. <laughs> no. So I, I put the 20,000 20, into the mortgage and like, I know I'm talking about it like it's, oh, it's only 20,000, but that's, I had to look at it that way because if I got too attached to the money, I wouldn't send it. So I had to kind of just look at it as in like, you know, my money, that's its job. And until that mortgage is done and, and I look at it and go, at 40 when when we don't have a mortgage like my god what will we do with all that money then we can invest then we can travel more we can can start new businesses it it, it, it will change everything the opportunities just mm. uh expand dramatically and you can then afford to go on lots of holidays and yeah. lots of different holidays to amazing different exotic interesting locations and yeah. you know take your son with you and of course take your son with you sorry because of that saying but um <laughs> you know you get to really enjoy it and enjoy it guilt-free without any financial stress and pressure on your shoulders and look don't, don't get me wrong I think the, the investment of travel is extremely yeah. valuable and when I say of you know be crazy not to travel it's only because the thought of me getting on an international flight with my children um I'd want to stab myself in the eye um, because it's <laughs> they don't sit still at home let alone in a plane on a plane so um very that's my opinion that i enforced upon you then so my apologies but you know it's you start having more choices and you've prioritized where your value is with money yeah and at any time if you want you can redraw that twenty thousand back oh. out for when that holiday is ready and Absolutely. appropriate for you which yeah. is which is great you're, you're it's smart intelligent and incredibly wise and comes with no regret. I've never had someone say, I wish you never made extra payments on my home loan. Yeah. Uh, so really, really int intelligent decisions here. What would you say was the number one most effective thing you did in seeing your mortgage drop? So we were only talking about last night and for the first two years, we just paid chunks of money, but we never really had a visual apart from like the online banking. So I remember coming across somebody that started talking about the amortization schedule and, and I printed one of those out and I got my highlighter and I could see how far ahead we were and on that last house we were up to 20 years so like the mortgage was at 2040 and it was going to finish in 2048 so I was like in less than five years we, we got 20 years paid and that well, so if you keep going at this rate, assuming obviously so, for simplicity, so the interest rate rises, how old will you be when you'll be mortgage free? So we sold that house in November and we were able to buy a new property with basically a 50% deposit. So, oh, wow. yeah, 
the most crazy thing is the mortgage we took out for this new house is the very same amount as the last house. But like we never could have bought this house four and a half years ago. Like we we couldn't have, we would never had a deposit. We barely had a 10% deposit on the last house. So that's where I'm telling people like we we didn't come with like lots of money at the start, but we just prioritized like like my husband works 50 hours a week. He works Saturdays. Like I work crazy hours. I work evenings now that I have my son. Like it's it's not as simple as just, you know, that's what we did. Like there was sacrifice, there was commitment, there's been conversations. Like I use cash rewards. I I, I do I love everything. cash rewards. I use cash rewards with thousand dollar project. I know, but it's just, but I talk to so many people who are like, oh, but what's the point? And you're like, they can't be bothered. They're lazy, but it's because they, because they haven't actually educated themselves around yeah. how easy it is. It's, and that, that aha moment going, oh, wow, actually. And I'll never, you know what? I'll show something funny. Tom, when we first started dating, had this, his ex-girlfriend who yeah. actually is an accountant. And <laughs> I actually am friends with her. She's, she, I really like her. She's fantastic. And she, he had to, she had told him, oh, Tom, no one pays off their home loan. Don't even bother trying. It's pointless. Oh. And I remember telling, telling me that. I'm like, that is a complete and utter load of BS. Yeah. And so I sat down with him and I showed him my lump sum extra payment mortgage calculus. And the face just went white <laughs> going, why did I know about this ages ago? What, what do you mean? And, and we quickly did a few things to his mortgage. I got him to refinance his mortgage at a much better yeah. rate. I got him to start paying his mortgage more often, making transferring his bonuses and reef tax refunds and stuff like that. Yeah. And he was in going it in leaps and bounds. And for anyone yeah. who thinks I can't be bothered to pay off their home loan, if you have any intention of upgrading your home, like you did, Laura, yeah. it is obvious that you are going to have a much bigger deposit, therefore a potentially smaller yeah. home loan or be able to afford a bigger home. If you've actually been yeah. making substantial inroads into your home loan, because obviously your deposit is the sale price less your mortgage. So if you want more money to buy a bigger home, pay your home loan off. It's madness if you if you're not. And of course, you do need yeah. to think about your personal individual situation, which I should remind everyone. Obviously, this is general advice only, educational, yes. no personal advice or product advice. So people who are thinking, "Oh, well, I'm not paying off my home loan because I'm going to move out of it and use this as a rental property for tax purposes," this is obviously yes. different. So you must go speak to your accountant and financial planner for personal advice. As I said, this is educational, but it makes a lot of sense. And there's even for the tax consideration you're saving the other thing is I want to ask you is what was the least effective thing because I'm sure you did you obviously left no stone unturned you did everything and anything you possibly could you were like a dog with a bone wanting yeah. to make this mortgage reduce as fast as possible what were the little things that you still did anyway even though they weren't effective because it gave you satisfaction to be honest like it sometimes felt like a diet I, I go with that 80 20 rule like I really don't think you can commit to this journey and be awesome at it every day. Like you, I just don't think you can. But the biggest thing was, and it's I find it painful, but I do. Since I got pregnant, I started tracking our expenses because, again, maybe it was out of fear. But I was like, you know, what if my business can't sustain me having a child, or what if my clients won't work around? me not being as flexible as before mm. so I think it was only then and I, I I really don't like doing it like because I, I hate inputting like how much I spend on my groceries each month and you know how much I spend on stuff for Danny and different things and like it's good for me to see it but I think it, it can feel like a waste of time mm -hmm. but I still do it I still yeah. do it because I get a satisfaction then out of it by going like oh yeah there's actually 200 dollars left there at the end of the month I'm gonna do it but you know, again, I've had conversations with people and they're like, oh, I couldn't do a budget or like I couldn't track it. Like, and yeah, it, it does take, it takes probably an hour out of your week if you're honest, you know, and not everyone wants to do that. But you've got to look at how, how much money you earn for say one hour in work. And like to some, to some money that might only be, you know, it could be $30. I think you're going to save more than $30 by spending an hour on your finance a week. I love the way you just think about that. That is absolutely gold. You know, that is so true. That is, and you, like we talked about that example of from last week's podcast where I talked about the $20 per week savings. Like mm. if you could find $20 per week and that equals $32,000 in interest savings, yeah, yeah unless you're earning $32,000, 
no, actually, you'd have to be earning six, uh, quick maths in my head, $64,000 oh. an hour. Uh, that's worth your time. Like, there's just madness. There is this, there's an element, I think, sometimes of arrogance and entitlement that yeah. sometimes can cloud people's financial successes or potential yeah. financial successes. Now, yeah. how uh, talking on that subject from mindset, how, how important is your mindset to you in this mortgage-free journey? Do you know, like... I'm not going to say that like oh god like it I think taking on this journey it's it's hard and you need to find those little motivations but I also think it does become routine I think maybe your first year doing it will be you know because you're you're trimming back things that you probably well maybe you thought you loved them but like for me even having a child now has changed everything for us because you know we don't have you know babysitters on tap we don't have our parents here so it's not like we go out every weekend like so our spending change but you know I I saw you brought your daughters to the you know the art gallery for free like Mm. there's so much especially in Australia like there's so much free stuff that you can do and you can fill a weekend where before you had kids you might spend hundreds socializing and easily it's so easily done and you also get caught up in this, I do this quite a bit, and that was one of the lessons of frugal February is I feel guilty that I'm always, you know, working in, on my computer. Yeah. And so I then try and overcompensate by, like, let's go to Kmart yeah. and buy a yeah. suit. And my kids have mastered the art of a tantrum um, yeah. in Kmart to get what they want. But, I, I, you know, and people say, well, I'm not near an art gallery. I'm in a remote area. But my, I took my daughter, Tiger, to the library. And she yeah. had so much fun. And she was just playing around with books and and crawling around and running around. And she slept for three hours afterwards. It was brilliant. And it, yeah. again, every, lots of people got access to a local library. I want us to ask you, how do you celebrate your successes? Please tell me you are, you know, stopping and feeling proud and feeling good and doing something to show yeah. your gratitude for the hard work and sacrifices. I think like for the first year or two like it was definitely celebrated around the fact that like when we'd hit like say when you got down to like 475,000 or 400 and you know 60 like you know when you did like those kind of increments of five and ten grand we definitely like celebrated like you know you might start planning a trip and different things but I think in the last two years we've been really busy with a new child (laughs) like our first child it's all being consumed you know, we had the craziness of COVID, which probably saved us a fortune in ways because we couldn't do much. We were stuck in Western Australia. We couldn't leave, don't forget. So like, you know, all those kind of things kind of added up. So what was what, what, like, what, would you go out for dinner and celebrate? Like, okay, yeah. well, we just cracked this number, this level now. Or would you go and reward yourself with a massage? Or would you do something that was not about spending money, but maybe just about celebrating the moment, like having a beautiful meal at home together? Yeah, I think it was just taking the time to celebrate and talk about the future and like, you know, why we were doing it. I don't feel like we would have bought stuff maybe for the house. Like, you know, we might have been like, right now we can go buy the new TV or like we, we did stuff like that. But I think in the last two years, the massive thing was the focus on a new house. So we were kind of like, the more we can do it, like, and, you know, we, we started visualizing new houses and started looking on realestate.com. But the thing is, we actually knew it was now achievable because we had, you know, we had put ourselves in that position. We've obviously moved house there in January and like, I we had like money left from the sale that we were going to spend on renovations and me being me I created my new amortization schedule for the house <laughs> and I was like oh, I, I really just wanted it that little bit lower because we're actually going to Ireland um in four weeks time so I was like I know that's going to hit us a bit financially so I was like let's just get that little bit ahead and I calculated that the 10,000 we had for cosmetic renovation so they didn't need to be done mm. it was actually thirty six thousand in interest and it would bring me to march 2024 so i just i took the 10 grand in because i was like there's nothing specifically in the house that i actually need to do mm. and it's just a flipping mindset and also as you said that 10 grand is sitting there for me to pull out if i need it but it just to me when i leave i think a lot of the time with people with personal finance, you leave that money sitting there and you spend it in ways. So I think having 
goals, whether it's the mortgage, whether it's investing, you know, whether it's saving up for a new car and, you know, even buying half in cash. I think it's just having goals for your money and being able to let go with the money because I think sometimes people are like, oh, I, I don't want to do it. Yeah. But I'm just visualising what change it can make. I completely agree. Look, the $1,000 project is just taking one big scary goal and breaking it down into parts yeah. of $1,000 at a time. And, you know, you should always have a goal. Of course, like there are times where you need a little bit of a respite and a break to yeah. recharge and that's healthy and normal. But if you want to get ahead financially and stop, treading water give yourself yeah. a, a a goal and break that yeah. goal into monthly goals weekly goals daily goals so that you actually start progressing in the in the right direction and it's it's the shift and breakthrough that you experience is quite incredible you've obviously really educated yourself around understanding a mortgage and understanding you know various concepts of it and the impacts of yeah. it would you say that you're someone who is very financial literate have you just literally educated yourself I've literally educated myself when that's the one thing when we took out the mortgage I actually didn't understand it I, I didn't like I understood what my weekly payment was and it was only then when I took some time and it's it really interesting I saw something on Instagram this morning and it was like if you spend an hour a day long term you know you can become an expert at something or at least very yeah. educated Topic because you're consuming just one topic so for me the mortgage that that's where like you know if you ask me about investing in different things like I know bits but the mortgage I get and until that mortgage is gone kind of like then I'll move on to something else and I think it depends on the type of person you are I enjoy upskilling so to me when you kind of think of what will you do after the mortgage, I just know that we'll just set another goal. It's not like we'll just sit back and retire because that I like my work. So I wouldn't I wouldn't give it up. I just wanna I just wanna use it to its benefit because a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage, if you don't if you paid over thirty years, it's probably about nine fifty you're paying back. I don't wanna pay four hundred and fifty in interest. It just it just doesn't appeal to me. Um, <laughs> Um, what would you say to anyone right now that has a home loan and they want to get rid of it or they want to start making them inroads? What, where would you suggest that they start? I think it starts with a conversation. So if you're a couple, it's start sitting down and having a conversation. And it's also understanding it doesn't happen overnight. It's, it's, it's going to seem like a really slow progress at the start, but it's more the consistency and I think you kind of manifest opportunities like when I look at where we started when we took out the journey like it it, it wasn't feasible but my business grew probably out of the motivation to pay down the mortgage Kevin took on extra hours he took on more responsibility he's got pay rises but would all that have happened if we had just accepted 480 a week I don't know so I think it's sitting down making a plan but being willing to do more than probably what you're doing right now you need and to have, and have a goal planted in that plan so and it have, actually has meaning have a goal look at your mortgage like can you refinance it have a chat with your mortgage broker you know a lot of people are on fixed rates and they're kind of worrying are they going to go on to a variable rate will they go on to a fixed it's they're all conversations you need to have and kind of burying your head in the sand is just not not going to get you anywhere read, read your book if they haven't read it the thousand dollar project it it simplifies it and it simplifies a concept in general just for how those little savings. It doesn't have to be creating that thousand dollars. Like it can be like, you know, every time you save the 20 bucks, chuck it across to the mortgage, like, you know, and you, you'll see it go down. I think that that's all I can say to people is and and understand that your mortgage is front loaded with interest so what you do in the early years actually matters because it, matters most. it has the biggest yeah. and best impact yeah yeah because some people kind of move into their house and they're like oh I want to get like really nice and pretty and I want to but if you if you kind of put a goal in place for even two years like you can still make it pretty after the two years but what what money would you have saved yourself and um, time and precious yeah. very precious time and even just contacting your bank and saying can I have a better deal I'm thinking of refinancing oh. just that in itself you don't have to worry about grabbing new paperwork and reapplying for home loans. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, the bank will say, well, if we're going to lose you, let's see what discounts you might be applicable for. Yeah. So that is another a very valuable, quick and easy option that everyone can apply. Now, yeah. I've got two last questions before we wrap things up. If yeah. you could go back in time, what would you do differently with your home loan? As much as I'm like so proud of where we got, 
I think we probably could have done better, if I'm honest. And I think the first two years, what we did wrong was I didn't track anything. I just had this loose concept in my head that I'd pay extra, but I didn't have any understanding of what a hundred dollars could mean. So I think visualizing it and creating it. So for anyone that wants to do this, spend some time researching how, like whether it's following some pages on Instagram, like what will that do for you personally because you could be reading about somebody who has a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage you might live in rural australia and only have two hundred thousand dollars like everyone's situation is different so it's understanding your personal number i think and then you can work from there so that's what i regret not doing was just having a more of an understanding at the start that's right and then my final question to you is how do you feel about your financial future are you excited i'm really excited and like one of the massive things is as expats in Australia, like the freedom to just fly to Ireland when we want. We won't have to go like, oh God, it's 10 grand at Christmas to fly. As much as we could afford it now, I just can't justify it when we have these kind of goals in place. So I'm really excited about that. I'm excited about, you know, creating new goals as a family. Are you excited about the idea of investing outside of the home? You know, obviously paying off the home oh, yeah. is your number one priority. But once that's done, you're going to have all this yeah. cash flow and yeah. you can start looking at including your superannuation as part of a comprehensive yeah. holistic strategy. You can look at yeah. investing now, investing yeah. in long-term growing passive income streams. You can also even maybe look at debt recycling. Well, you don't have any debt, but you can look at borrowing to invest and, and tax effective yeah. strategies. There's so many more tools. And look, oh, some I- of these you can do in unison or in combination with a, a debt paying down a home loan, such as a debt recycling strategy. But the opportunities out there now are, are are huge yeah and that's the thing like I come from a family business background and I remember like that's one of the things my dad always said to me like he he has like multiple investments and opportunities and the biggest thing he said was you just get the get the debt gone and then you can take chances so he was very much like you know if you had a business loan or something like you just you just get it down as much as the bank will encourage you not to pay it down because they're a business. They want to earn money. Yeah, but that's how they make billions of dollars. <laughs> you know, of like, stupidity. <laughs> they make it hard for you bloody to switch to a weekly repayment because they're like, oh, don't do that. You don't need to. But it's just that understanding. So I'm excited to, like, I feel like I don't need to spend any more time educating myself on mortgages. I, I understand it now. So I'm excited to start looking into investment and long-term strategies and, you know, looking at even different business avenues and you know with the VA business I can't grow it anymore so for me to be able to like work around my lifestyle here and have my son and stuff so I want to look at other opportunities and you know by being in that position that you're not tied to a mortgage like that would free it up absolutely look Laura thank you so much for sharing all your insight wisdom and knowledge (laughs) around how to pay a mortgage off as quickly as goddamn possible and how to set yourself up with a lot less stress, uh, a lot more pride and satisfaction and a sensation of progress. It's very, very valuable, everything you have just said. And for anyone who'd like to learn more, I highly recommend making sure you follow Laura on her Instagram account. It's called The Savvy Ma'am. Her posts are brilliant. They're really easy to understand. They're incredibly inspiring and motivating. And they really help educate you around your mortgage, how it works, and how to beat the bank. So, Laura, thank you again for coming on to Sugar Mama's Fireplay. To all the listeners, if you could please leave a rating and a review. Of course, make sure you are following my podcast. And if you hear this podcast and you think, oh, my goodness, I need to tell everyone about it, please share it with (laughs) everyone you know because I would love to make everyone mortgage-free in Australia. (laughs) And I, I think Laura's story is a great source of inspiration. So thank you, everyone. Have a great week, and I'll see you next, or I'll see you on. No, I will you'll speak to you on Wednesday on How Do You Afford That with Michael Thompson and an I from Fear and Greed. Ciao for now.